Hi everyone. So I thought I would jump on and do a quick video because it has been quite the week when it comes to the world of generative AI. We have just seen the launch of OpenAI's Sora, which is their new text-to-video model. We have had text-to-video models over the past couple of years, and they have incrementally been improving over the time. Um, we've got some pretty big players in the space like Runway ML and Pika and Wonder Dynamics and a bunch of other um, video generator or video tools that have been um, launched in the AI space. But I've always found that whilst they're really impressive, that they were still felt quite far away from being production ready, as in being able to actually use them to produce good content or material. And I thought that they would eventually get to, you know, a point where they could be used, but I thought that point might be quite a while away, maybe even 18 months. However, this week with the release of Sora, everything feels like it's changing and that we are now on the precipice of having our video moment um, that we had already with text. Uh, so when ChatGPT was launched, we really had that moment where like, wow, this is impressive and it might change how we work. And for some of us, it already has changed how we work. Now I feel a little bit like with video, we are seeing a similar trend where it might be about to change how we work with video and that has huge implications for creatives and for anyone that is using video. So I thought we'd jump in and have a quick look at what the Sora model is to try to unpack that. Now, this is OpenAI's new Sora model. So it is the AI model that is video from text. And it says that we are teaching AI to understand and simulate the physical world in motion with a goal of training models that help people solve problems that require real world interaction. And it is a text to video model. And what's interesting about this in particular is that Sora can generate videos up to a minute long. Now, this is pretty impressive because a lot of the other models like Pika and Runway tend to generate a lot shorter frames. Maybe it's about four seconds. Perhaps you can push it a bit longer, but 60 seconds is certainly quite the achievement. Now, if you haven't already seen this one, it's pretty impressive. The prompt they gave it was a stylish woman walks down a Tokyo street filled with warm, glowing neon and an animated city signage. She wears a black leather jacket, a long red dress and black boots and carries a black purse. She wears sunglasses and red lipstick. She walks confidently and casually. The street is damp and reflective, creating a mirror of, of effect of the colorful lights. Many pedestrians walk about. What's really impressive here is that you are seeing reflection on the video. And that is impressive because it really indicates that it kind of understands how the world works, a little bit of physics there. And it's got some reflections in the glasses as well. Look at the detail of her skin. Um, it is, it would be difficult to be able to tell that this was AI generated, to be honest, particularly after what we have seen from AI generated video in leading up to this moment. Now I thought I would do a quick side by side with Pika, which is one of the current text to video models and put the same prompt in down here and see what it generates. Now here is the Pika output. Um, pretty impressive little image that it has output, mind you, you know, it's got lots of neon signs. It's kind of followed the brief, but it is just three seconds that it's generated and let's press play. So whilst this is pretty cool, it is not quite to the standard uh, of Sora. Now let's have a quick look at a different one here. We've got Leonardo AI, shout out to Leonardo because they are based in Sydney, just like me. Um, so they have something called real time generator. Um, I'm going to put the the prompt in there and see what comes out. Um, oh, there we go. So we've got uh, a couple of different versions that you're able to use on Leonardo. They have a little drop down where you can actually change the, um, the, the style. So from cinematic, we've got painting, we've got sketch color. So you can see that it is still pretty cool following the brief here. I created this and I'm going to press image to motion and see what happens. So here we have Leonardo AI's output, which is still impressive in that it's uh, followed some of the brief. It's got the uh, reflection and it's got the person, you know, walking through a uh, town that might look like Tokyo. Um, but yeah, it's still not quite what Sora is in terms of that photorealism. Now back to OpenAI uh, and the Sora model, it is worth noting that it is not yet available to the public and that they're currently going through their red teamer process to make sure that it's not risky and all of that. Um, so hold your horses that will come. But speaking of horses, here we have the prompt historical footage of California during the gold rush. 
And this is a pretty impressive video, I must say. I'd be hard pressed to be able to identify it as being AI generated. And I do think this has a significant impact on what the future of creative industries will be. And also stock footage. I feel like now we'll just be able to generate whatever stock footage we need at any given moment. And it would be pretty realistic and so affordable to create as well. Um, a very impressive uh, video generated here. Now I mentioned before that it has impressive ability to understand the physics of the world. And I feel like this video is really demonstrating that. Here the prompt was reflections in the window of a train traveling through the Tokyo suburbs. And what's impressive about this is that it has, you know, a reflection of a person, they're holding their, their smartphone and it is just passing by the streets. And I just think that this looks so realistic. It's, it's mind boggling to think that this is AI generated. Now, mind you, they do say that it does have weaknesses with physics, particularly in complex scenes. And this particular one seems to demonstrate that where you've got this man kind of running backwards on a treadmill or these wolves, little wolf pups. Oh, there's five of them all of a sudden. So it's not perfect. It definitely it's definitely been cherry picked with the other ones. Um, and the model does clearly have some uh, some ways to go. Here they have the prompt, archaeologists discover a generic plastic chair in the desert, um, excavating and dusting it with great care. Clearly the OpenAI team do have a sense of humor. That is a fairly funny prompt. And whoa, that seat is floating. Interesting. Here's a cute little Dalmatian sitting on a very nice windowsill. Wow, it's pretty impressive. I mean, the feet are landing pretty well on the ledge, but I don't know how that Dalmatian pup got around the window uh, shutters there. Very impressive pup. Now, this is probably one of the more impressive ones, actually, because the prompt here was a movie trailer featuring the adventures of, a, of the 30-year-old spaceman wearing a red wool knitted motorcycle helmet, blue sky, salt desert cinematic style shot on 35 millimeter film vivid colors now this is really impressive because it is multiple scenes of the same person here and i think that this is incredible detail i'm just amazed by how good quality these these videos are but yeah those were the outputs from sora you can jump on openai's website and check out some more of their videos on there there are lots to play around with they're pretty impressive some of them even have different views of the same scene that's pretty amazing from a world building perspective it does appear to have some concept of um, physics and that's a pretty impressive emerging capability coming out of these models um, it'll be interesting to see where it goes and I can't imagine what it'll look like in a year. Um, but at this stage, it is pretty impressive. I know that some people might be concerned about the training data. And so am I. I'm really curious by what they've used to train it. But it should be noted that they do have an agreement with Shutterstock. It's a six-year agreement where they can use Shutterstock's, um, all of their imagery as well as their videos to train their future models. So it's possible that unlike ChatGPT, which has come under a lot of heat with um, using training data for uh, from, from copyrighted materials, that this one might not have, but we'll see. I guess, you know, that things will emerge in that space. I have also read that it uses a lot of synthetic data for Sora, which is basically where the um, it's videos that have been generated by AI to use it as training material. So that might be what has happened. Um, but yeah, we'll have to watch this space and see what happens there. So that's it for me. Uh, it has been a bit longer video than I had intended. I had wanted to make it about five minutes, but it's well blown out past that. It is a very impressive technology. It feels like it's the chat GPT moment for video and that it might be able to be used in production in the future. There's obviously some things that they need to sort out at OpenAI with Sora uh, before it is at that point, but it's coming and it feels like technology is moving at a much more rapid pace than we had thought it would. And I guess that's the nature of exponentials though, that once uh, you have the work and you build on it and build on it and build on it, it just keeps on improving. So yeah, it feels like our work is going to change and it has been changing already. And yeah, it's going to be an interesting year ahead, I think. So drop some comments below. Let me know your thoughts. And yeah, I will chat to you soon. Bye.